Revelation chapter 2 and verse 7. He who is able to hear, let him listen and give heed to what the Spirit says to the churches. He who is able to hear, let him listen and give heed to what the Spirit says to the churches. I was studying the scriptures and I was reading Revelations in December and when I read uh, these chapters, the, the first three, four chapters of Revelations, I felt the Lord speak to me that uh, we should start off the year reminding the brethren what God's heart is for the church what God speaks concern, how he would like the church to be like initially I wanted to preach this in our church but then I realized that it's for the body of Christ the entire body of Christ needs to hear this uh, the scripture says he let me read it again he who is able to hear let him listen and give heed to what the Spirit says to the churches. So there is a message that the Spirit spoke to the churches through John on the island of Patmos. Now that message is as relevant to our church today as it was relevant to the churches then. Are we together so far? As we share concerning these different churches, there are seven churches that Jesus gave a message to. As we share concerning uh, these seven churches, I pray that somehow we locate ourselves in one or two or three. I hope we don't find ourselves in all the seven churches, but I believe that as we share these things, the Holy Spirit will help you to see where you are as a member of the body of Christ. If you are a pastor attending, this is good for you because you will know uh, what the Lord would like your local assembly to, to be like. Yeah, because what he spoke to the church at Ephesus and the church at Philadelphia, I believe it still is relevant to the church in Kabale, the church in Wujiri, the church in Entebbe, the church in Australia. Hallelujah. Are we together? So, of course, Revelation 1 is introductions, opening statements, etc. And then the messages start. In chapter 2, verse 1, to the angel messenger now i'm reading in my bible in the amplified to the angel or messenger of the assembly or church in ephesus right right these are the words of him who holds the seven stars which are the messengers of the seven churches in his right hand who goes about among the seven golden lampstands which are the seven churches i know your industry and activities laborious toil and trouble your patient endurance and how you cannot tolerate wicked men and have tested and critically appraised those who call themselves apostles and yet are not and they have found themselves to be imposters and liars what a great report would you want wouldn't you want this to be uh, said about you i definitely for me i would want this to be said about my church like god says ah my son I know your industry. Ay, 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 ay. I know your activities. I have a track of all the things that you're doing. You're working so hard. You're toiling so hard. I know how you endure. 
I know how you're patient. Hmm? Even you check out all those fake guys, all those uh, all those people who call themselves apostles. You have you have a mechanism. You have developed this mechanism by which you critically appraise. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you know you, you can you can smell a false apostle from very far you just need to listen to the first five sentences and you know this guy is not legit I know I know I know <laughs> you know every imposter you have a record of every imposter in the city you work so hard, you pray in the morning, you pray at lunch time. You have these prayer and fasting groups, you have all these activities, you have all these outreach activities. I know your industry. You're working so hard. Hey. And then he even added in verse 3 that I know that you are enduring patiently, bearing up for my name's sake. I know. I know you have not fainted. Eh. Even when the work has been so hard, even when you've had a busy Christmas season hmm, with activity after activity, blessing the city, blessing the nations, whoo, I know you have endured patiently. You're bearing up for my name's sake. You have not fainted. You've not become exhausted. You're always there. You always attend every fellowship. You always attend every morning glory. Oh, you're so happy with yourself. You're so pleased with yourself. You, you just feel good with your activity. I know. I know. <laughs> Are you still with me? Are you still with me? He knows. He takes note of every activity, every industry. He says, I know. I know. You know? I know. I know. And then when the messenger of the church at Ephesus was nodding his head, was feeling so good, was... <laughs> was telling other people about such a good CV that God has spoken, such a good recommendation that God has given, then comes verse 4. Oh, but I have this one charge to make against you. You have left the love you had at first. You have abandoned the love that you had at first. You have deserted me, your first love. Oh, oh, these are the kind of verses that you read and something pierces your heart. That you know, you can have a lot of industry. You can be so active when you're backslidden. These people, this church was backslidden, but they were extremely active. They were patient. They were toiling. They were going through trouble, but they were backslidden. How long? Are you still with me? Are you still there? I know. You know, I, 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 in my mind, when I was planning for the January seminar, I was planning to talk about, you know, someone's in January usually are, this is the year of this. This is the year of advancement. This is the year of unusual miracles. This is the year of something. This is the year of, this is, it. it's going to be powerful. You are going to, hi, hey, hey, hey. That is what I was getting myself ready to tell you. 
This is the year of knowing God. This is how we are going to know God. Seven ways, seven steps. This is how we are going to do it. And then God says, tell them about the churches in Revelations. Ah, I'm sorry, but this is what I have to share with you. Oh, hallelujah. That I can be there and I know everyone who is false, everyone who is true, the guys who are deep, you know. I know that, yeah, that guy, I can recommend him. I know him. His word is he's deep, he's, he's legit, he's, he's just, yeah, you're safe with him. That one, don't listen to him. That book, don't read. And I can critically appraise everybody. And he has a charge against me. I am enduring patiently, I am fasting, I am having all these things, and I have left the first love, the love that I had at first, I have deserted him. It is, there is a, it, it is possible to be in a place where <laughs> let me read for you something here. let me read for you something there it's possible to be in a place where activity has replaced relationship it is possible to be in a place where you think the more activities you're engaged in the closer you are with God. Uh, is this making some sense? It's, it's, the, it's important that as, as we start the year, we ask ourselves some questions. Some questions. Is it possible to be on fire when I don't have the first love. You know, uh, my motives for ministry today, the same as when I first came to the Lord, when I was serving God in 1996, 97, when I had just come to the Lord, the motives I had then, are they the same motives I have now, or oh, now I minister? And, uh, you know, there's a time, those days, I was still on Facebook. Um, I was at the university doing my postgraduate. And, uh, you know, there's this whole thing about Facebook page, ministry Facebook page, getting likes, ETC. So you are writing something. <laughs> You're writing something and you keep checking to see who has liked it. Uh, you keep checking your Facebook to see uh, who has commented on the page, who has liked the page, whether your likes are increasing. Uh, until I, I reached a point, I, I, I realized I was in trouble because I would be preaching in a place and the reason that you're taking photos is the Facebook page. Uh, you, you, at the back of your mind, you're taking photos so that those on the Facebook page can know that you have arrived, <laughs> that you, you're ministering to thousands. <laughs> and then we would have those conferences and then you're making photos and then you know photoshop came and then you you get this crowd of a bonke crusade or the crowd of a some some man of god's crusade and then you get your picture and put it there and then you put on the flyer are uh, the motives for ministry today the same as when you first came to the Lord. Do you worship 
for the same reason as you did when you first knew the Lord. And I say that again. Do you worship for the same reason as you did when you first knew the Lord? There is a time when we worshiped God for just. You worship God. You just wanted to, Him to be blessed by worship. You, want, you wanted Him to enjoy your love. You wanted Him to enjoy your time. But now, they tell us, worship God, His power will come down. Worship God, His fire will come down. Worship God, eh, worship God, the, His anointing will come down. Worship God. So, do I worship God? Uh just for him to be blessed by my worship or because I badly need this power to display to the world that I am anointed. Activity without relationship. Activity. Uh, are, are we together? I, 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 like I told you, I, I wanted to preach. I told you, I, I'm, I, I, I tell you, I wanted to preach something else in the January seminar. I, I was going to tell you, this is your year. Finally, the year you have been waiting for. <laughs> the year has arrived. This is the year of sevenfold triple blessing. <laughs> I was going to tell you, but I was stopped in my tracks to tell you this. Do you still love the Lord or you just love doing His work? Can I say that again? Do you still love the Lord or you just love doing His work? Mm. Uh, uh, another question is, uh, have you replaced faith in God with faith in the men of God? Have you replaced faith in God with faith in the men of God? My man of God, my man of God, my man of God. Are you so in love with God as you are with the man of God? again eh? Revelations chapter 2 verse 2 says I know your industry and activities laborious toil and trouble I your patient endurance you cannot tolerate wicked men you have tested and critically appraised those who call themselves apostles and they are not I know you're enduring patiently Bearing up for my name's sake, you have not fainted or become exhausted. But I have this one charge against you. You have left the love you had at first. Verse 5 says, remember then from what heights you have fallen. Yeah. They had a lot of activity in a fallen state. Mm. They were ministering from a fallen position. Remember then from what heights you have fallen. Remember, repent and change the inner man to meet God's will and do the works you did previously when you first knew the Lord. So this... <laughs> This is a year of going back <laughs> to when we first knew the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. This is a year <laughs> of going back to when we first knew the Lord. Jeremiah, if you can open with me, is Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 
16. I want you to hear the word of the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Thus says the Lord, Stand by the roads and look, and ask for the eternal paths, where the good old way is. Then walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. <laughs> These guys also. Anyway, our word is not what they said. Our word is what God said. Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look. Ask for the eternal paths where the good old way is. Then walk in it. Eh? Look for the good old way. The ancient paths. What you did when you first knew the Lord. The kind of devotion that you had when you first met the Lord. I'll show you another scripture. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse number 2. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse number 2. Uh, it says, Jeremiah 2, 2, it says, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember the kindness and devotion of your youth. Your love after your betrothal in Egypt and marriage at Sinai, when you followed me in the wilderness, in a land not sown. Ah. The devotion, we are talking about your youth, you are in terms of when you met the Lord, okay? Your youth, when you are a youth, when you have just met the Lord, when you are young in the Lord. The devotion of your youth, your love after you had been married to the bridegroom. It says Israel was holiness. Verse 3, it says Israel was holiness. Something set apart for, from ordinary purposes, dedicated to the Lord. The first fruits of his harvest, no stranger was allowed to partake. All who ate of it, injuring Israel, offended and became guilty, and evil came upon them, says the Lord. Verse 4 says, Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What unrighteousness did your fathers find in me, that they went far from me, and went after emptiness, falseness, futility, and themselves became fruitless and worthless. Oh yes. This is the year of returning to the ancient parts. This is the year of returning to the first love. Jesus is coming back soon. Jesus is coming back soon. This is the year of, you know, the other day I was talking to God like, yeah, I thank you for what you're doing. I mean, your presence. But I want to be here just for you, not here because I wanted someone to preach. I want what? I just want those moments we used to have. I would be in the Bible and I'm studying and studying, reading and reading, just enjoying fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm there because I need a crash someone, a crash someone, something to talk about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Show us the ancient path. That was an old song we used to sing. Lead us along eternal highways. We want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your way. Something like that. We want to come back to that place in Jeremiah chapter 6. Remember the words which God told the church at Ephesus? Those words are as relevant to us today as they were to them then. 
remember then from what heights you have fallen if you have not fallen from any height we really thank god for you pray for us pray for us if you've not fallen from any height just pray for those of us who realize that maybe we stepped back a bit maybe we downgraded a bit maybe we changed priorities a, a bit maybe we changed lovers a bit I pray for us it says repent uh, change the inner man to meet God's will and do the works that you did previously when you first knew the Lord and there's then a stern warning or else I will visit you and remove your lamp stand from its place huh. now imagine he says we are the light of the world but imagine being the light without a lampstand i don't want to be in that place when i'm a light that doesn't have where to shine from uh, i will visit you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you change your mind and repent can you spend some we still have five minutes can you just talk to god in five minutes please in the next three or four minutes can you talk to god uh maybe there is something as i was sharing maybe there is something that you realize maybe you are now in activity but the bible study you used to have died the prayer times you used to have they died the times of worship you used to have in the car, they died. Maybe the family altar you used to have with your family, with your children, maybe it died. Maybe, maybe as, as I was sharing, you are realizing some heights from which you have fallen. Can you just talk to God and say, Lord, I am coming back to the heart of worship. Lord, I'm coming back to the place of seeking you for you. Not for the gifts that you have, but for you. I'm coming back to the place of seeking the giver, not the gift. I'm coming back to the place of loving you for just, for just loving you. I'm coming to the place of seeking you, not to show that I'm better than others. Coming to fellowship to attend, not to show that I'm better than others at attending fellowship, but to just come, you know, just talk to God. Just, just have a moment with God wherever you are right now. Just, just have a moment with God and let the Lord minister to your heart. Have a moment of deep reflection, a moment of you know, repentance and telling God, I'm changing my mind about this. I'm changing my perspective about this. I'm changing the way I've been doing this. I'm coming back to the old way. I'm coming back to the ancient paths. I'm coming back to the place of loving you, to the place of serving you. I'm coming back to the place where I serve you, not for recognition, where I serve you, not for people's praises, but I serve you for just, for just. I'm coming back to the first love. Lord, we are coming back to that first love. We are coming back to that first love, to that that desire that we had for you in the beginning in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we want to walk in the ways of jesus show us the ancient path lead us along eternal highways we want to walk in the ways of Jesus, we want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient path, lead us along eternal highways. We want to walk in the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Thank you, Jesus.
in the name of Jesus we pray and the saint said amen amen amen